Chapman Medical Eligibility, which is a physical or mental impairment that significantly affects one's ability to uh, obtain or maintain employment. There's a reasonable expectation that you'd be able to benefit from services and that there's nothing really in the background, like you're not going for surgery next week and so you're not available for services. You know, there would be a reasonable expectation that you would be able to participate in services. For those people who are collecting uh, SSI or SSDI, uh, you are assumed to be eligible but if there is, you know, any type of concern about that, where, you know, we're not really sure if a person has, like, I have a person who has 13 disabilities, and I'm not sure if she can work. So we did a trial work experience to make sure that she would be able to work. So this is a not complete list of disabilities because every day you meet a new person and every day uh, there is you know a disability that's not on this list you know that a person comes in with and but this is a just a, a short listing of examples of some of the individuals we've served over the years and these are the conditions they've had and we have to look at all the disabilities. You know, if a person comes in and says, you know, I have a, a learning disability, um, but they also have a back injury, we have to look at all of the disabilities because it will potentially affect the um, job that we'd be able to get them. Some people come to our office and they say, okay, I just got out of jail and I'm here and I need you to help me find a job. A history of, uh, a criminal history is not a disability. However, what led to that may be, there may be an underlying substance abuse disorder. There may be an underlying mental health issue, an underlying learning disability that caused the person to um, end up in the penal system, then uh, that would be the disability that we would be considering. So this is a, a list of services that we do provide. Um, and I will, you know, make sure to email this to you, Steve, so that, you know, anybody who wants uh, a copy of the PowerPoint can have it. Um, but this is a list of some of the services that we provide to um, individuals. There is one service that we used to provide that uh, was very, very popular. Um, it, would call, it was called the Homemaker Program. And we used to be able to help people who were older, who um, were maintaining their, their home and that was their job was to maintain their home, their cooking, their cleaning, their laundry, you know, their food shopping. And but they needed a hearing aid to, to be able to do that work. Federal government finally stopped that program several years ago and said that it had to be you were going out to work to a job that you were being paid by someone else. And so we are no longer able to offer that program, which I was very disappointed about because we did a lot of good work in our community that way. So how are services determined? Well, I, you know, I meet with a person, I go over their background, uh, talk about their education and their work history. Uh, I look at what transferable skills, what do they have in their background, um, what skills might be outdated that they that need to be updated, and does the person need to be completely retrained, you know, company moved to North Carolina, and, you know, uh, there's no other company like it, and there's, we need to retrain them, that's also a possibility. So I look at what they're interested in, what their aptitudes are. I look at what physical limitations they might have and you know, what their strengths are. And I look at the job market. 
you know, and, you know, I might have someone, you know, who has hearing loss and they really want to work with people and uh, I might be able to find a social service agency where they could do some good work, you know, and, and use some connections there. Um, I also have to look at the agency policy to see what we are able to provide um, and then offer options. There are services that are based on what a person has in their income, and there are services that are not based on it. Basically, if we need a medical of any kind, medical, psychological testing, anything like that, um, that's not based on anyone, how much money you have in the bank. If we need to look at what kind of technology we need to, to get, or if I wanted to test for a hearing aid, you know, uh, we would pay for that. If I needed to determine what kind of thing you'd be good at, um, I, we would pay for that. Um, we provide uh, vocational counseling and guidance. Um, some people need a job coach. You know, some of our, our folks with intellectual disabilities um, really benefit from having job coaches. We pay for that. Um, we pay for work tryouts and on-the-job training. Um, a work tryout is, uh, is a great program where we will pay the person's salary for a certain period of time and the business can then decide if they want to hire that person. Um, on the job training is the person's been hired but they're missing a skill and so we are able to assist them in order to get that skill so that they can get the job. Uh, we can also do short-term training like at Rockland BOCES or a certificate program at RCC or Westchester Community College, things like that. Now, there are services that are based on income. If you want to go to college, the state of New York is, use, is using your taxpayer dollars. If you have people who have lots of money in the bank, it's not really fair for us to take your tax dollars and pay for their college. So we don't do it that way. We, uh, we do look at a person's income and whether or not they meet financial need. And we look at that, we look at that for training, for college, for room and board, which is what maintenance is. Uh, if someone needs a modification to their home, uh, a doorway widened or grab bar or, you know, uh, hearing aids or driver training or a business license, transportation, we have to make sure that they really need the state to extend the money, that they don't actually have the money in, um, in their own bank account, in their own resources. Um, job placement services is another area that we provide a lot of assistance. That's not with regard to economic need. Um, we are we provide that to everyone who comes to the office who is interested in it. Um, we may provide uh, classes and consultation on uh, appropriate job seeking skills. We may look at your resume and and improve it. We may provide interview skill assistance. We may provide job placement services, um, short-term coaching, and then longer-term coaching through supported employment for those who need it. We have uh, a number of financial incentives because we are part of the state education department. We are able to issue tax credits for the state of New York. Um, in the past, businesses haven't been too concerned with earning these tax credits. Some more, some have, but some really didn't matter. Um, I think we're going to see a real uptick in people wanting to use our financial incentives at this point in time in order to be able to um, climb out of some of the financial debt that um, the pandemic has levied against businesses. 
We also provide something called worker retention services. Um, for example, I'm working with a young man right now who has cerebral palsy, and he has been working for 30 plus years um, delivering mail, um, and he's falling. And uh, they're asking us to come in and provide some, some work, work site assessment to look at what we could do to assist him to do his job safer so that he can retain his job. We may provide a reasonable accommodation such as a medic alert. So if he falls, he can alert someone. Um, we may uh, be able to assist in a little wage reimbursement for retraining, you know, should someone need that. And we provide a lot of just general job consultation. We also do a lot of disability awareness training. You know, um, we had a career center open uh, this year in Rockland County at Rockland BOCES. And some of the folks had a pretty good understanding of disability awareness and, and interaction and, and, you know, they were good with their skill level. Others were not and were fairly new to the area and really didn't know much about reasonable accommodations. So it was my job to provide um, several days of training so that they were up to speed on disability awareness, on uh, reasonable accommodations, and on the ADA. And we, we have had uh, a couple of uh, issues with the ADA recently uh, in one of the counties where a business has indicated that they, they were going to fire someone because they had a job coach on site. And, um, and we let them know that that was not happening. And, uh, and we provided uh, the technological consult to the provider agency who was going to um, contact their human resources department because you certainly don't want to fall afoul of the ADA because the law is very clear about having a job coach on site and that that is a reasonable accommodation and six figure penalties have resulted. So, you know, I do a lot of training. I'm doing one next week for, uh, for an agency that needs to soften their approach to uh, some of their uh, workers with disabilities. And, you know, we'll get it done. So in essence, this is the process to get through our program. We have an online orientation right now because we are closed to the, the public. Um, so our office, uh, our office website has uh, the front facing page has uh, a three part uh, uh, pre recorded series of information. Then if people are interested, the application is on the website. We determine medical eligibility. We meet with the person. We determine what their goals are and we help them to plan. We provide training and job placement if they need it. And we provide employment. You know, Access VR has 15 district offices with uh, adding the satellites in. We have 26 satellites. We serve over 50,000 people a year in our office, and we have about 13,000 people a year that go to work through the efforts of our program across New York State. In our area, um, we have we usually average around 500 people with disabilities uh, end up going to work um, on an annual basis in in uh, Rockland and Westchester County. You know, consumers have rights in our agency. Um, you know, there are many people that you know I know, and then. They know people that I know, and I don't tell them, hey, you know, you know, I saw Debbie Wolf, you know, last week, you know, I, you know, I, and, you know, maybe they didn't know that I knew Debbie and Debbie was my client. I do not discuss my clients in the community ever. 
it's it's a a, a big deal to me. Um, sometimes clients disagree with um, the uh, decisions that we make, and so they are offered mediation to try and resolve the conflicts. Um, it doesn't happen very often. I think I've done it a few, two or three times in the 33 years I've been at Access VR. Um, the no, 31 years, 31 years. Uh, you know, they could also go to an in administrative review. They can go to an impartial hearing with a, an administrative judge if they feel that they're really not being heard and they can have the client assistance program advocate for their rights as well. So these are all rights that uh, people with disabilities who come to Access VR all have. And we think it's important for them to you know, know about those rights. You know, so when a referral comes in, a referral should include information and the documentation should include what the disability is, how it is impediment, an impediment to employment, and that they are ready and able to pursue access services and to go to work because, you know, we're not financial aid. So, you know, we don't provide education for education's sake. We provide education for you to go and get a job. And Social Security maintains a large trust fund. And when we close a file successfully, we get all the money back from Social Security that we spent on that person. And it could be well over $100,000. And then that money is return to us so that we could use it again for the next person. We will often ask for a specialty medical report form, an audiological, a mapping, you know, something that would uh, indicate what uh, the disability is. And it has to be signed by a doctor, a nurse, or, an, or a physician's assistant. Um, for those folks that need mental health alcohol and substance abuse um, report forms. We need completed referrals um, and that has to be signed by a psychiatrist, a psychologist, a medical consultant, a KSAC, uh, a social worker, licensed clinical social worker, nurse practitioner. So in general, if uh, there's any doubt of whether or not, you know, someone would be eligible for services, you could refer. Um, people from the community have reached out to me for decades. You know, do you remember me? You know, I, I, I worked with you 25 years ago, you know, and I still get emails, you know. Um, and, you know, individuals can come back more than once. Uh, if they've closed their case and then their job moves to Texas, they can always come back and we can always assist them again. Um, we also encourage people, you know, sometimes we have clients that come in and they wait, they sit at home and they wait for us to call. Well, each of us handles a, f a full caseload of between 250 and 350 active clients. And so it is our responsibility to make sure that we reach out to them as much as possible, but we run all day long, every day. So it's good to be proactive and reach out to the counselor um, and uh, and ask the information, ask the questions that you need answered, because I think you would find that we are fairly responsive to uh, to answering the folks that we serve. So um, I do want to make sure that you are all aware of the Job Accommodation Network, um, AskJan.org. Um, that is uh, a website. It is a free website. Um, and it has the accommodation for pretty much every disability you could possibly imagine. And if there was a combination of disabilities that you needed to get information about, you could call them 
and or email them and tell them what you needed in terms of accommodations and they could assist you in customizing accommodations. You know, when I have trouble with businesses in our area or I need to, you know, and I need to consult as to what we should do next, I reach out to the Northeast ADA Center. I am a certified trainer from the Northeast ADA Center. I provide a lot of training. Um, and we had a wonderful training last December. We had uh, three um, uh, contestants for uh, a disability etiquette jeopardy. And they were all individuals with intellectual disabilities. And they were the contestants and they had job coaches and we did it on Zoom. And they answered more than 45 questions about how to interact with people with disabilities and how many people do you think have this condition and, and what would you do in that circumstance? And they were just terrific. And the target audience was the career center staff and they were all on the call as well. And our individuals with disabilities taught the career center staff about uh, the appropriate way to interact with uh, individuals with disabilities. It was really lots of fun. And they won a gift card from the Workforce Development Board for doing it, which was kind of a fun event. So those are types of things that I do with them. So in terms of success stories, I mean, it, after 31 years, there's lots and lots of them, you know. Um, I can think of a payroll clerk for the county um, who uh, went to work um, and uh, she couldn't do phone work, but we were able to, uh, she did all the paperwork and uh, someone else took on the phone work and it worked out beautifully. You know, um, on our website now, is uh, the story of Jan Michael Guillermo. And Jan Guillermo um, uh, was my client and I trained him at uh, RIT in software engineering and he got his bachelor's degree and his master's degree. And he interned for Google and uh, started two years ago at um, Microsoft in uh, Redmond, Washington, um, making six figures as his first job out of school. So, you know, and he's bilaterally profoundly deaf. So, you know, so it, we get, we have a lot of success and that's why I say you can spend a hundred thousand dollars because we did, you know, but it was certainly worth it in the end because look at where he is today, you know. So we do have a lot of wonderful success stories. Um, I am based in Rockland County. However, I do serve both sides of the bridge. At this point in time, I do not go to the Westchester office, um, which is, is at 75 South Broadway. Um, on the second floor. Um, I, I remain in the Spring Valley office and I do every meeting just like this on Zoom. So that's it for, uh, that's it for that presentation. And I'm just wondering if you have any questions, Carolyn. Yeah, um, I'm just curious, okay. I'm, I'm okay right now at my job, Yeah, but like I, Men anything could happen, okay? Um, I, I mentioned before, I'm five years away from retirement, but again, anything could happen. Um, I'm pretty much been taught to die for now because um, they, they hire younger and, and um, more tech savvy people. Not that I can't learn the tech, technology. I'm, I could say I'm proficient, but not the newest technology. Mm -hmm. Now, would your office be able to help someone that's older rather than someone that's at a 
old, um, if something should happen, my first approach might be to apply for Social Security Disability. Well, I will tell you that Access VR has no um, cap on the age of uh, their their participants. My current oldest client uh, is um, was a retired uh, police chief, and uh, he uh, just got a job as an overnight manager in a transition house for a gentleman who are returning from prison. And he's the overnight guy who watches and makes sure that they don't do anything they're not supposed to be doing. And he's going to be 80. Oh, okay. I'm a librarian by profession. So I would want to work in a library. Um, mm -hmm. Right now, <clears throat> I did some Zoom calls um, with my local library. And I told them after the pandemic was over, I would come and volunteer. Um, Put that one way to network, to network yep. um, in case I'm preparing, just in case, mm -hmm. you know. But does your office help with Social Security disability? Um, we do provide what's called benefits advisement, where um, we access VR as, if you will, the bank. So as one of the services we provide, we have our independent living service experts sit down and go over all the ins and outs of social security disability and all the rules that apply. And then they help you to apply and we pay them to do that. Oh, you know, okay. Because I, I cannot keep all of my government rules and all of social security's government rules together because my head would explode. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I put him, I'm, I'm, I'm a librarian, so I can go online and figure out what I need to do and what forms I need. I mean, that's not the problem, but I've heard so many stories. People have difficulty with um, getting social security disability. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still young yet. I mean, if it were to happen tomorrow, I'm only 57. Right. Oh, excuse me, 56. I'm not 57 yet. <laughs> Um, okay, so that I was just curious, you know, mm -hmm. if your office could assist in something mm -hmm. like that or yeah. help me find a, a part time job. Um, because I would want I can't sit home and not work, right? Um, do you have connections with libraries? I actually um, placed a library, I had a young man who wanted to be a library assistant. No, oh, okay. And he had years of experience as a library clerk, but he was working two jobs and didn't have any medical insurance because of it. Oh, okay. And he wanted to work at one job in one library full time so that he yeah. could have medical. So there is a government hiring program called 55A. And I was, a, I, uh, I explained the program to him and he went and contacted all the, the librarians, the library directors in, in the area. Okay. And one of them contacted me about seven months after he started this odyssey and said, tell me about this thing where this guy can go around the test. So I explained how it worked and um, it has to be for what we entry level for the series. So it doesn't okay. mean entry level employment. It might mean, you know, like, like library clerk is the entry level yeah. for that uh, series. And um, so I, so I tried to get him a library assistant, but the list wasn't out yet but she really liked him. So she said, you know, but Westchester County HR said no, because library assistant is not entry level. It's the next level up. So I'm like, so they, you know, Westchester County HR said, 
hire him full time as a library <laughs> clerk, Michelle. So, <laughs> okay. So I told the library director, maybe do that. And so she went to her board and proposed because he spoke several languages and was very talented and has years of experience that she hire him at the top of the grade. Wow, that, that's so good that story. for library clerk. Yeah, you know, that's fine. I, and, I, I don't and need so a career. At the top of the grade. And then now the list is out for library assistant and the whole staff is helping him with oh, his nice experience review so that he'll score well so well, that that's why I'm, I'm i'm doing the networking right yeah. now while i'm working yeah um and then i even joined the wet check the library association mm -hmm. and i met a couple of librarians in devil of the branches and um, they kind of have their comfort it's online so it's easier for me mm -hmm. than in person because i'm yeah. working you know yeah. So I'm really, um, it feels good. It yeah. feels good. But I was just curious what your services would be in case I get in a bind. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank and you. And there's also the Ramapo Catskill Library Association, and they cover a, a large area as well. So, okay. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Any other questions? Yes, Melanie. No. No. You're muted. You're muted. Muted. Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay. Um I'm hoping to retire next year. You I can't retire a, before me. <laughs> well, I'm gonna be fifty five next month. Wow. I have a very demanding and grateful job in the county fund. I mean, I could put in 12 hours a day, whatever. And if I retire, my husband is younger than me. I do want to continue to work, but I want to work in Rockland County. If you're traveling to Manhattan, I live in Spring Valley. It's like an hour and 45 minutes, two hours, one way. So I want something like maybe three days a week. Is that something you can help me? I'm an FPT in bookkeeping and payroll. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'll come to you when I'm ready. Okay. Yep. Uh, no problem. Okay. Yep. So I get to post your information at the end or something. Yes. You know, the mm -hmm. phone number or a card or. Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Steve has my information and my email as well. And I'll email oh. you, Steve, the, the presentation. Great. Okay, I do, hear, I do hear on the phone. Mm -hmm. And right now I'm wearing a neck loop hooked up into uh, my laptop. Okay. So I can hear well. My husband's on the other side. Actually, he's walking on a big TV. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm trying to work while I listen to you, so I'm not with him. <laughs> right. Well, but, I, that's like I said earlier, auditory training is important. And guess what? I got to cancel on, and I, I'm on the iPad right now, and it's streaming directly into my iPad. I went, sorry to say, but I went to the bathroom, and I was still listening to you. <laughs> okay, I'm not kidding. I, I would, I was actually hearing you, and I was like, "Wow, this is really cool." <laughs> I'm glad I could keep you company. <laughs> but no eye. <I>. No. <laughs> I know I have a TV streamer connected to my TV with an implant, and I come in the kitchen, go to the bathroom, and I hear everything. Wow, it's Amazing. all good. It's all good. Yeah. yeah. Technology has come a long way. Oh, yeah. I remember you from, what, 20 years ago. We didn't have it much. When we were I just using Amplifier right. phone and TTY. That's basically all we had. Then right. the pocket talker came. Yes. That, that was a big help. Yes. Yeah. Well, when I first started a long time ago, 
before personal computers were on the desk. Wow. <laughs> wow. Fascinating. 70. Before the relay service, people would come to my office and I would have to make phone calls for them. I was the relay service. Okay. In Westchester County. So it was, it was a wild long time. time long time ago. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank goodness. Wow. Okay, I did notice something on one of your slides earlier. You had a lifting of a disability, and you had alcohol on there. May I ask why? It's a substance abuse disorder. Because, you know, think, think about it this way. Um, I will, you know, go and have a, a glass of wine and then that will be it. An alcoholic does not have one glass of wine. An alcoholic has many glasses of wine. So what about drug addict? Same thing. Same thing, same thing. It's, it's a biological reaction in the brain that causes them to go overboard and it, and it also uh, damages the brain. Um, right, both alcohol how, and substance abuse. How do you help them? If they don't help themselves, well, we if don't. they can't hold a job or, <sighs> I mean, like, why work it on your lip? I'm, I'm getting a little confused on because that. Because it is a disability. It's a substance, substance abuse disorder is the, is the disability. It is a protected classification under the AD under the ADA and um, and it is you know it is a disorder like MS or hearing loss or anything else okay. and it has its own disabling conditions memory loss and you know uh, all kinds of physical side effects and uh, you know and not to mention financial ruin and yeah. all the rest of it um, we do not provide treatment. Um, they right. usually come to us uh, after they've been in treatment and are ready to kind of pick up the pieces of their life. Then we help them with uh, vocational retraining, um, with, um, with schooling, you know, and that kind of thing. Right. And I got to tell you, we have tremendous success um, with people who are motivated to turn their lives around, they, those are some really, really, some of the, some, not all, not all, but some of them are really motivated. And I've had some wonderful success stories, you know, um, where we've, we've seen them, you know, go from bottom of the barrel to college graduate. <laughs> well, it's a big mental health problem in the country. You know, and um, that's why you have what's going on, you know, the gun violence and everything. It's all connected. It's yep. terrible, terrible. Yep. Anyway. Yep. yep. And we, we deal with a lot of different mental health issues. Yep. Um, you know, a whole host of different mental health issues. And, and, you know, we have to, you know, we have to provide advice and counsel in order to be able to assist with that, you know. One of the things that I see that's very common amongst people with hearing loss is a little bit of depression when they stay home and they isolate. <laughs> and I think I've spoken a truth because I see a lot of nodding heads. Yeah, well, you know? yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and, and, and I had a system, which Debbie is very familiar with, that I would meet, you know, somebody who I thought was isolating and I would give them her name and I would send her after them so that they, she would get them out of their house because it, it wasn't safe to just be staying home. And, you know, it, so it, it was a joy to be able to do that. Yeah, well, it, it, you don't want to stay home, but I have to say I'm grateful I'm still working. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm still making my money. You know, and, no, I'm not. You know. I'm not talking about the now staying oh. home because we have to because of the oh, pandemic. Oh, okay. I'm talking uh, about pre-pandemic 
when it was just easier because I don't always understand what people are saying. And right. so right. I just, it's easier for me to just stay home. And, yeah. you know, and I'm like, yeah, I have a group for that you. It work that way. No, yeah. I have a group for you. Here's this woman's name. <laughs> She's going to call you. <laughs> yeah. So any other questions? Yes, Michelle, Steve. Some people will say that the cost of your services to the state, the federal government and society is very great. And you've said it could be tens or hundreds of thousands yes. of dollars. Yep. But can you cite a statistic where through training, someone is gainfully employed, they become taxpaying citizens, um, they wean themselves off of certain social services. So that is in fact, a, a great net benefit to society. Yeah. We are, we are actually, um, I, I've been with Access for a long time and we have never been cut. And one of the reasons why we have never been cut and never been touched, uh, we're not in what's called order of selection where we can only serve the most severely, severely disabled clients is because we do what we do very well. And we are able to put so many people to back to work. And if they're not drawing benefits from the system, they are contributing to social security. And that's what we are looking for, for them to do. You know, it's very interesting. Different people have different perspectives. I was on a, a committee to, you know, redo our brochures and our, you know, and, and all the rest of it. And, um, uh, you know, and one of the, the pieces of feedback we got uh, was a, an article that someone wrote saying the mean state of New York making people with disabilities go to work. How dare they? You know, and I was like, what? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> the more people that work, the more people pay taxes into the system. Right, but what is the first question at any party? What do you do? Right. You know, and, and er all of my clients, I had a client, he was, he never worked outside of a workshop ever. And he got a job working at a grocery store. And then he called his uh, job coach by the, and he couldn't speak at all. And he called his job coach by the video phone and he holds up his vest and the people in his group <clears throat> home had bleached his black vest and he's crying. He thinks he's gonna be fired. And he was so proud of the fact that he finally got a job in the community. He died about a year later, but he, was so proud of the work that he was doing and he had never ever worked in his whole life until the very end and he loved being out there in the community and i have that person and i have my software engineer you know and i have everybody in between you know one of the joys in my career has been i have seen every possible vocation and every level from, you know, people often think, oh, Access VR, that's those cart carriers, those baggers, that's what they do. And I, you know, and I have to explain to people, no, 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 you know, you know, we, you know, we, we, you know, we, we train nurses and we train, you know, physical therapists and we train social service workers and we train, no, no, you know, teachers and lawyers and, you know, so. It's a, it's been a, a wonderful um, time to be able to do what we do and give back to uh, society. And the program started at just after World War One <sighs> when veterans came back, um, and they did not have. Um, uh, arms and legs and nobody knew what to do and vocational rehabilitation was born and that's how we started 
So, you know, we've been around a long time and nobody seems to be cutting us. So, Melanie. Matt. <laughs> okay. During the fire time, I mean, I'm working from home, okay? It took me a while to get the hang of it. I'm not techie, but I'm doing good. In the general population, okay, I'm talking general, there were many people that got laid off from work. They collected unemployment. Um, they tried to get a job back. And I have to say, I know many of you people had a lot of problems hearing and lip reading because we had to wear a mask. Okay, I know the first couple of months, I, whoa. I had a fight with CBS. I went to pick up my prescription. I had a fight with somebody else in the store and whatever. A lot of those people, the unemployment ran out and they just went on like disability. Did you have anybody recently that ran into a problem that you helped to get a job or to overcome or I think you understand my question. Yeah, I mean, you know, we've never stopped uh, placing people. You know, some be what the biggest problem we have is that a lot of people don't want to come out yet of their homes right. because they don't feel it's safe. However, um, we I place people. The library clerk that I just talked about before, I placed him in November, right in the middle of the pandemic. You know, and, and, you know, and who knew that our grocery clerks that we've been placing all of this time had to show up for work. Not only did they have to show up for work, but they were determined to show up for work because they need us. How are we going to feed the county? They need us. So um, we have a, a, a website. Um, if you Google Westchester Employment Network US, um, it's uh, that's where we have uh, an awards presentation, um, and you can see examples of uh, people that have gone to work, and you can see there's a video. Um, I'm presenting the awards and. Usually we have about 250 people that come every year and we have, and last year was the 30th anniversary of the uh, ADA. So we had right, uh, right. a speaker come from the uh, Northeast ADA Center and he did a, a great talk and um, we won the two awards that I wanted to win the most statewide, an employer that um, that kept going during the pandemic and the work they did and students with disabilities and the hospital that employed them. And if you get a chance, check the video out. It's about 45 minutes. Everything is captioned um, by me. So, you know, but it was... Um, it was really, really worth, uh, it was great to see um, all the people that got wonderful oh. awards and it was very meaningful. You, um, you know, there's gonna be a lot of um, availability of jobs because I, I had I understand because I work for the federal government, they're having a, a backlog of retirement claims um, there's going to be a lot of um, retirement in many different industries, mm -hmm. um, so they're going to be jobs available when, well, when the, things open up. The population is aging um, in the United States, and uh, the workforce is going to be uh, about 25% of the population will be over 65 in like 10 years. So... Uh, it's, um, you know, it's going to put a lot of pressure on Social Security. That's one issue. Um, but it's, uh, it's going to open up 
options for uh, people who are looking to get employment. And unemployment has improved um, in, at, the, at its absolute height, it was 14%. Uh, it's now hovering in our area around 6.7%. Before the pandemic, it was 3.4%. And you know, I used to pound the table when I was talking to my job coaches, telling them, if you can't get people a job now, you'll never be able to get them a job because employers can't find work anywhere. You know, so it's, uh, it's been, uh, a lot more challenging now, but it's okay. You know, we keep at yeah, it. Yeah, baby, yeah, baby boomer. Um, what? I just wanted to let you know, we had Joe Detti at the speaker. He came, he spoke with our group. Remember, I got the name from you, Joe. So he, he joined, he was very good. I Isn't can't remember when great? we had him, but it wasn't long ago. He was very good, he was very good. But thank you for that. Yes. Yes. Yeah, he he's my buddy. He's he, the person I call. Right. Hey, Mr. Al, when I was the whole town meeting a couple of years ago, I had my, my, my board just me to have a whole conversation saying, no, I don't have it in insurance. That that's true. When it's up half up, I got Karen Halliday working the job. You know what I'm saying, Michelle? Mm -mm. What? What he's saying. No, no. I'm a Republican. When I worked the hotel a couple years yes. ago, I had my manager that I have to work compensation for sharing. He said, no, we don't have to cover. Oh. That, that's illegal? Um, I thought they all had to have that, but I don't know. Yeah, I thought they all had to have it. That place where he work and didn't have, uh, Nothing. That's illegal. We want to have the jury, or you, you can't do anything about it. You're not there now. <laughs> okay. Melanie. Since I work in payroll, I know about disability, pay family leave, and worker compensation. All companies supposed to have worker compensation. Um, yeah. They can add it onto their insurance, okay, as the rider, or they could take out a separate policy with the New York State Insurance Fund. Right. Okay, and the employer yeah. has to pay that. Yeah. Uh, the family pay leave, that comes out of our paycheck. The employee pays that. Mm -hmm. The disability part, you get what's called 60 cents taken out of your paycheck. The map is 3120, and the employer pay the other half. So that's how that works. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. Thank you. Other questions? If there are no other questions of Michelle, I'd like to really thank her for being here. That uh, was a wonderful presentation, and wow. uh, I, I think a lot of us had, uh, had good things to say about it. So I put in the chat box Michelle's contact information, okay. and if she sends me a copy of the PowerPoint, I will also distribute it to those who are on the call today and other members of the chapter. So again, thank you so much, okay. Michelle. We do appreciate it. Where um, can I look for that video? you type that into the chat so yes. I can write it down? Sorry. Yes. Hang on. I want to make sure I get it correctly. Thank you, Michelle. Okay. Mary, it was wonderful to see you. Robert taking a picture. Absolutely <laughs> wonderful. As always, we invite everyone to stay on the line to socialize with other members, express your thoughts about this evening's presentation, your own experiences with hearing loss, and anything else that's on your mind. Uh, please don't forget to unmute your microphones, identify yourself, 
and speak only one at a time. Uh, finally, if you like what you heard today, please invite your friends, relatives, coworkers, and others uh, with hearing loss and without to join our next chapter meeting, which will be Tuesday, May 11th. Uh, details will be coming out with a flyer as well as on the chapter website, which is hlawestchester.org or in our online newsletter. You can also email us at hlawestchester at gmail.com. So, Michelle, if you'd like to stay with us, you're invited. But please, again, thank you so much for being with us this evening. I would love to, but I haven't eaten yet and I'm starving. So, uh, <laughs> so, I, do. so I, I was you. in late from work and kind of had to run up the stairs and quick get ready. So I'm going to head out. But it was so good to see you all. Thank you so much for all of your time and thank attention. You. OK, thank you, Michelle. Thank you. OK. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. So our small group is here together. Um, Debbie and I are wondering, what, why is the group so small? We think we're putting on good presentations with good speakers, um, but it's kind of the same people, maybe one or two others. Um, we have over 45 members, I think, of the chapter. Our mailing list is what, Roy, about 160 people. Yeah. We let them know about our meetings. Um, people are paying for membership. Why don't they enjoy, join us? Um, I, I, I think you need to do, I think the board need to do a little bit more. I mean, just my feeling. Um, I, I think it's also a different time now. I, when I used to do programming, I used to also put flyers like out in the supermarket you know, they had like a wall or put it in the library. Things are different now. I don't know what it is, but all I know is that when I go to the New York City chapter meeting, they right. get like a hundred people on the call. Yeah. I've been going yeah. to them since I've been home. And yeah, it's well too. presented. And they don't, I, I mean, I know there's some differences down there, but uh, they seem to get a hundred people and why can't we get a hundred people? I mean, there's something uh, wrong with the way we're advertised in our meeting. I don't know what it is. Something uh, we can Yeah, um, I, I, even the Florida um, Association, they had 75 people on that on that Zoom call last week. Um, the New York State Association did a program and they had a lot of people. New York City, I did the New York City one last week. As right, well, right, right, um, with Harvey, Michael Harvey, the, um, the psychologist, it was very good, you know. Um, I'm like, why can't we get it? I don't know where, I told you once before, I know it, it's a delicate issue, but we really need to share that with the walk people too. Okay. The, the lit, the, the lit, the walk lit. Okay. You know, and and chair the program with national. You did that, Steve, right? Right. The, yeah. the May 11th meeting will be a walk rally. Uh, Ronnie Adler is joining us. Um, in the past, we've had the uh, executive director of HLAA on. We've had Rebecca Alexander. And some of those meetings have attracted a few more people. But again, it's not 60 or 80 folks. So I know New York City is, is starting to do some paid advertising in local community newspapers, and they attribute that to some of the increase um, in their audiences. But I, and, and we are also publicizing it in uh, the weekly newspapers out here, the White Plains and the Patch and the other, other uh, online newspapers. So we're, we're doing a little more outreach. Um, we also let the state association folks know what's going on. I didn't advertise this particular meeting because it was about a, a New York, uh, New York. program uh, with the uh, national leaders group and the national chapters. Another thing I can do is I can share with our chapter all of the other meetings going on around the country. So Debbie knows about some of them yeah. 
and and Carolyn and others. So, you know, there's some fascinating meetings going on in, in Knoxville, Tennessee. I attended earlier in the week or, or New York this evening uh, or, or Florida chapters this evening, California as well. Some of them in the evening, some of them on weekends. Uh, the great thing is you don't have to leave your, your couch or your house. Uh, just right. click on the computer. You don't have to drive. Uh, you don't have to worry too much unless it's a conflict with work uh, about driving at night or in bad weather. Um, so if you have any suggestions for getting the word out, um, some chapters make phone calls to remind people what the meeting's coming up and what we're doing. I'll give you an idea of a couple of our upcoming meetings. Uh, I mentioned May 11th is a walk rally because the walk is, is the virtual walk is coming up in June. Um, I did see another walk rally by the Tennessee chapter. Um, one of the walk managers was on there. It was very interesting. Um, I'm, we're, we're having Catherine Bolton uh, from New York City. She was the president of New York City chapter. She's a published, published author. Oh, you got her? Uh, books you got on, her? On, well, books on oh, hearing oh, loss. You did. Oh, you did. She'll be joining okay, us good. in the late summer or, or okay. fall. I, good. I, that was a suggestion from folks, and I, I followed through on that. She's delighted. Um, she was a editor and, and writer for the New York Times and other publications. So she'll be speaking to us. I'm trying to get a speaker from the Apple store to talk about all of the new uh, Apple assistive listening devices and That's apps good. That are out there. Um, so I think we're, we're narrowing in on that. And, uh, and we will also wanna do some social activities. Um, we had some holiday parties. We had uh, we had a Halloween party. Um, we're talking about doing a painting party online, maybe a wine and cheese party where we could have an expert talk to you and maybe even send ahead of time little little bottles. But we can wine. get together soon outdoors. Well, that thank you for bringing that up. Are are <laughs> any of you on the line today? comfortable yet and we're, we're all vaccinated looks like but having an on-site meeting uh the libraries are not open to no us. They're, outside. they're physically closed or they're not allowing meetings but maybe something at fdr park uh the park in rockland is beautiful where you, where you walk today debbie um yeah. something like that would would you feel comfortable in the near future in getting together in person yeah. Okay. okay I have a I have a question. Sure. Does anybody does anybody have a generator? A generator. Yes, the re the reason I'm asking is because there's going to be no loop. But if we have a generator, maybe oh, we we're not going to put down that kind of a, a small loop. The chapter owns a generator. Oh. Okay. I didn't know that. Okay, and we do yeah, have a portable loop. Month. We gave it to you guys. Right, we right. have a portable loop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a generator. Um, we normally do a, a barbecue during the summer or, or catered. Last year we did a, uh, or two years ago, we did a, a catered lunch, a box lunch at uh, Matheson Park in Irvington. It was well attended. Maybe we could do that towards the end of the summer. That park isn't open yet, but it, it will be at some point. Um, hopefully by December, we'll be able to do a holiday party again. Um, those are always well attended. So yes, we're gonna do some in-person things, but uh, most chapters haven't found a problem switching over to Zoom. Some of them have found it more beneficial, I think, People are more comfortable with Zoom and the technology. I've been, I've been more than willing to help people to do one-on-one -on -one training on Zoom. Um, so that should not be a hesitation. I well, a last summer, if you remember, we got together in the FDR park. It was a we did. Small group. That was a we informal. had a barbecue. Yeah, right. that was informal. And we right. had a great, uh, that was not a a great time. Way, that was not a fundraising thing. No, no, no. And yeah. we can all make 
I bring don't think your own, and, 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 bring your own you know. Right. Well, we had to limit the number of people. That's what I know, it was. I know. Okay. Steve, I have a doom question. Um, if let's say my local library has a program, okay, and it's not going to be captured, right? Okay. Now I would have to let let's say I have a free account, okay. Mm -hmm. And I would have to contact them just for general information. Um, I would have to contact, somebody asked me and I didn't really un try to give a good answer. I would have to contact the library to enable it on the host site. Yes. Right? As I've done tonight. We okay. have a, a Zoom Pro account, which isn't very expensive. And it allows for up to 100 participants. When National does a program, they have an account that but allows them to- But that's not my touch. Yeah. Okay. So I asked them to, ask, to enable the um, caption. Now, if I have a free account, does everybody see it or does the individual turn it on? If you're watching the library's account and they're turning on Zoom captioning, you should have access to it, whether you have a free or a paid account. As you're but, doing but now, when they, but okay, but when they turn it on, not everyone in that um, Zoom call sees it, only if you turn it on. Right, Correct. that's right. right, that's right. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Now they but may that not was be- the question, that was the question, someone texted me and asked me, do I contact the host of the Zoom call to have them activate it. And then, then they asked me, will everyone see it? I said, I'm not sure, but I do know that you can turn it on and off. Right. Okay. So they may not be aware that Zoom has added this function. It's only been a couple months now. Right. It's a new thing. And that, eventually, the, eventually I think- they will, they will offer it for free accounts, but not quite yet. Yeah, not yet, but the host can turn it on. Yeah. Yes. And you can turn it on. Right. If yes. I don't want it, yeah. okay. Roy, Roy doesn't have it on. I have it on, but Roy doesn't. Oh, okay. Okay. That, well, thank you, Roy, for telling me. <laughs> you could turn it on. You could increase the size of the font. You could move it to a different area of the screen. Yeah. There's a lot you could do with it, but the host has to turn it on. Right. Okay. That was the question person asked me, but he he didn't want he he was afraid that if he asked the host that everyone would see it. No. And I no. said I'm not sure, but I do know the individual can turn it on or off. But it has Absolutely. to be activated by the host. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, thank you, Steve. I was, just wanted to make sure I gave him the right info. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And if anyone has any questions about Zoom, let me know or I'll find out. There are also great tutorials on YouTube as well as on the Zoom site. And I've attended free tutorials by Zoom Someone was presenting it in England or New Zealand. So they've got a, a wealth of information out there and they're doing very well during the pandemic. Oh yeah, I can imagine. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm expecting a oh, call. I don't know what happened to Steve. Okay. okay. Well, again, thank you very much. Please tell your friends and everyone who, who might be interested in joining us Give us a try just once. I think they'll like what they're seeing. Oh, okay. Steve's gonna sign off. I lost my video. Oh. Uh, okay, there we go. Uh, okay. I thought I turned off the recording, but I turned off my picture. Okay. You know what I found out?